Hello, my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And in this video, I really wanted to share with you 13 tips, tricks, hacks, if you will, that really helped me to get more confident and more creative with the serger. And as always, I want to remind you that all of these are from my own personal experience. So something that really helped me. And I truly hope it will help you out as well. But we're all different, so some might not apply. So as always, take what works for you, figure out the rest. And the first tip is really rather simple, but it does the trick. Now you know that I use serger quite a bit, almost on a daily basis, and I see this reoccurring comment underneath my videos that you guys are absolutely terrified from these little knobs that are featured on the serger. Now your knobs might be on the other side, might be on this side, might are kind of all over the place, but really one way to get past that fear and to really embrace all of the functions that your serger has to offer is to go ahead and label these knobs. So that way, next time you need to adjust the setting on the stitches depending on your project, you can surely know that this knob is responsible for the width, this knob is responsible for the length, and this one for differential speed. Same goes for the threading. If your serger does not feature color-coded threading, or maybe it's an older serger, and every time you have to sort of reinvent the wheel and remember how to thread it, go ahead and maybe number that. You can also number some of the things on the inside of the machine if that does not interfere with threading and all of the other mechanics. Next, I grab a big paintbrush like this one because my serger is one dusty machine because I do use it that often. And even after a single project, depending on what type of fabric you're using, there might be a lot of stuff accumulating right inside of your serger. So a big paintbrush like this one that I don't use for my art stuff really helps me clean it out quickly and gently. Now, if you've just completed a serge seam and for whatever reason you have to undo it, first of all, deep breath, because I know it's not a pleasant experience, but let me share with you a few tips on how to undo it faster, easier, and cleaner. First, find the right side of the seam. That's where you're going to be able to see two stitch lines from the needles. Now I'm going to start with this middle row. I will pick one and I will go ahead and take it out. Once the middle row is gone, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing to the bottom row as well. Once those two are gone, these come apart real easy. Now give your fabric a really good press and you're ready to serge again. But what to do if you're working with really lightweight fabric like chiffon or silk, for example, and any pooling like that will greatly distort the edge of the fabric and you won't be able to work with it again and perhaps it will also distort any of the following threads throughout the garment. That can be a really big mess. So in that case, uh, it is a little bit more painful and a little bit more time consuming, but it's still pretty doable. What I like to do is I like to use little scissors like that, but of course you can use a seam ripper. And I like to go right here in between and cut every so often like this, gently. As I mentioned, it will take a little longer and perhaps you do have a better method and if you do, please let us know in the comments. But once you have done the entire length of the seam, you can just go ahead and gently remove those threads like so. If you're undoing a really large seam, a little lint roller like that will help you clean up your workspace and clean up your fabric as well. This next tip saves a little bit of money and a little bit of your sewing space as well. This thread that goes into the left needle is the one that you can actually see if you really pull your fabric apart at the serge seam. So here's the tip. You don't actually have to use all the same matching color cones in your loopers and in your needles. This here, of course, is the extreme example, so that way you can see the clear visual in front of you. Usually, I just try to match the left needle the closest that I can to the fabric of the project, and the rest I either fill in with similar colors or with neutrals. While I have all different color thread in my serger, here's the next tip. If you're trying to adjust tension on your serger, but you're just really not sure which one you should adjust and how to go about it, then if you thread your serger with different colors, you will clearly see which needle or which looper is responsible for which thread and what to adjust. I get asked about it quite a bit, so here are three methods how you can deal with the ends of the serger seam. First, I'm going to start by chaining off. 
Then let's grab a latch hook like this or a small crochet hook will do as well. You can also DIY one for yourself. That's what I was using before. Then one of my sewing friends gave this to me and it's hands down probably one of the most used sewing tools in my work. What I do now is I push it through, then I hook it, and then I pull it back, and that's it. Next method is really simple. I just go ahead, take a needle, and I pull one of the threads out. So that way I can undo the seam. And then I just simply go ahead and tie the threads in knot a couple of times. Once done, snip off the ends. This last method is not my favorite, but sometimes it comes in handy. First, make your way all the way to the bottom of the seam. Make sure that you have chained off just a tiny bit. Then, lift up your presser foot, take your project, flip it to the other side, place your project right back underneath your needle, try to not to cut anything off this time, and just go forward just a little bit to secure the seam. This end of the seam is now secured. For this next step, you can go ahead and open the front cover of your serger. Some sergers, not all, but some have a really pleasant surprise. They feature a little storage space where you can store your stitch finger when you're not using it, a little set of needles, a little screwdriver, and perhaps a couple of other things depending on the model of your serger. So that way, everything is nice, neat, and organized and right here where you need it. Now here's a little power tip for you. Now although sewing for me is a deeply creative endeavor and I love it for that, when it comes time to sort of like putting everything together, I also like for it to be efficient, especially if I'm doing a lot of batch sewing. So here it's really easy and really straightforward. I first assemble all of the pattern pieces that I need on the sewing machine if that's part of the sewing, and then I just feed it one after another on my serger, leaving a little bit of space between. Once done, I just cut it right in the middle, and that's it. I completed all of my pattern pieces all in one sitting without ever lifting a presser foot. Next, I have a cluster of tips regarding stitch setting, changing those up, troubleshooting, and whatnot. So first of all, on brother sergers, I'm not entirely sure if on all of them, but I do have two brother sergers and both of them have this. The regular, or let's say the most used stitch settings are actually marked with black boxes. So for example, here on stitch width, number six and seven are as is, but number five, which is most commonly used, has a little black box around it. Same goes for stitch length and differential speed. So that way, if you are changing up settings on your serger, let's say to do a flat lock seam or anything like that, you can always return to the sort of regular or the most standard settings because they're clearly marked with black boxes. I know it sounds like such a small and perhaps even silly little thing, but I truly do find it quite helpful. Tension on a serger can definitely be a big pain point for a lot of us. So for me, the biggest help is to actually print out a troubleshooting page from your manual and keep it handy. Now, if you do have a physical manual, like a book that came with your serger, then you can either write it down or do a photocopy. If you don't, you can find a PDF manual online, print it out, or maybe take a picture on your phone, whichever way works for you. And I find it really useful because it tells you here step by step. And in my manual, it even gives me extra helpful tips like this one. When you adjust the thread tension, do it in the following order. Left needle, right needle, upper looper, lower looper. This is the easiest way to obtain correct thread tension. I must admit that I have blamed a good portion of my serger problems on tension and tension alone, because in my mind way back, it was like the only thing that could go wrong with a serger. It was like the nemesis, right? But in the reality, there are a lot of variables that go in a serger. So over time, I really sort of taught myself to treat serger the same way that I would treat a sewing machine in a way. So when we're starting a project on a sewing machine, apart from fabric, we have a lot of variables, right? Presser foot, needle, thread, here is the same thing. I wouldn't really worry about presser foot because most of your projects are going to be completed with the same presser foot that your serger came with. But I would really encourage you to take a look at the needle. Needle size and also how good are your needles after so, so many projects. Because from my own personal 
personal experience. I had it happen to me when I was sewing with a really bent needle. I didn't notice it and my serger stitches really weren't forming correctly. So I was blaming it on a tension and I even started to think that my timing was off. Well, in reality, it was all about the needle because it was really bent. When I saw it, I thought to myself, holy guacamole. So definitely take a look and take good care of your serger, change your needles and clean it. Now this next tip is actually good for your overall sewing, your pattern drafting, your pattern adjustments and serging as well. It might not be your cup of tea but I do think that it can actually help you out a lot and that is to have a sewing journal. So majority of the entries in my sewing journal are for inspiration, I also do little diagrams of pattern drafting and things like that. I note how much ease I added, what I did here, what I did there and once in a while if I do find a serger technique on some particular fabric that I know I have more of in my stash, I make a little swatch and I write down exactly what stitch settings I use so that way next time I go and I do this rolled hem or flat lock seam or this or that, I don't have to think about it again. I just go ahead, take a look at what I noted down and just do it. Now this next tip is about discovering new techniques that your serger can do. There's plenty of them, they're really useful and in a lot of cases, no matter what is your serger, a lot of times it can do so much more than just a regular serger seam and that includes really pretty rolled hem, that includes flat lock seam that you can use to hem with, so many great techniques that can make your sewing a little bit faster, maybe a little bit easier, maybe a little bit more appealing depending on what project you're working on. So check out this video right over here, I show you how I do five really simple, really easy serger techniques and I hope it will help you out as well. Until next time, happy serging!